Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new to the channel, um, a warm welcome to you. And if you are returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your uh, trading colleagues on social media if you find the uh, content that I provide every week um, interesting and uh, useful. I've been getting a lot of feedback from uh, traders. And um, again, thank you for you know your feedback on my videos and uh, I will continue to deliver uh, quality content that helps you to navigate uh, the you know the world of uh, uh, forex both from a fundamental and technical analysis perspective because of trading 180 it's not one or the other it's a combination of both to make the best trading decision so we apply fundamental analysis to really establish di our directional bias overall and then apply technical analysis supply and demand strategies uh, and and uh, liquidity hunt strategies uh, stop hunting that to time uh, trade entries, establish profit targets, and uh, general risk management. So let's get into the uh, the forecast, uh, I guess, for this week and the economic calendar, I should say, um, for this week and uh, Monday, fourth of April. Um, we've really the most important news um, uh, for the currencies that we trade. Anyway, are you know we've got balance of trade uh, for 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 uh, Germany. <clears throat> Um, Tuesday, we've got the RBA uh, interest rate decision. It's expected uh, to, to be held, um, but a rising uh, interest, um, a hike in interest rates is expected within the next maybe uh, six months or so uh, by the second quarter. So that's generally positive for the RBA, um, for the Australian dollar balance of trade, which is always worth a, a watch as well because it affects uh, gross domestic products, uh, manufacturing for the US. Um, the uh, what have we got now FOMC minutes on Wednesday as well is definitely going to be keenly watched so uh, that obviously gives us um, an insight into how the Fed uh, Federal Reserve was thinking um, about their uh, decisions to potentially high rates and what you know they will be doing going forward and we'll get into that um, uh, as we get into the charts Thursday will be balance of trade again for the Australian dollar and um, Again, a uh, positive balance of trade is always good for the uh, for the economy. And on Friday, we've got um, what have we got stability review, consumer confidence, and unemployment rate uh, for for Canada. Again, uh, for Canada, I think the uh, forecast is for a uh, consensus. Matter of fact, <clears throat> is for uh, lower unemployment. Uh, uh, the the uh, trading economics forecast, their own forecast is for it to pretty much stay the same, but either way, you should have uh, lower unemployment, which is again always good for an economy. And um, as long as the economic um, uh, situation is is looking good, then um, you know uh, you should have a stronger currency if the central bank is still looking to high rates. Anyways, let's get into the technicals and a bit more in-depth fundamentals. And let's start off as we always do every week on the dollar index. And the dollar index, um, you know, is as a uh, dollar overall has been a buy for me. Uh, it's been a buy for a very long time. Um, and dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against various currencies like the euro, the yen, and the uh, and the pound. So uh, what we've had here, I was marking this out last week. We did have uh, prices come uh, uh, down into this zone here. Um, I wasn't too keen that this was going to be a, uh, a strong level of demand, but it did turn out that you know the uh, the buyers of definitely as far as you know a, a fair auction is concerned. And when you see prices uh, move sideways like this, you know it's not it's not a consolidation or anything like that. It's, that's the wrong term, really. It's uh, known as an auction and, and a fair auction at that. Buyers are looking to uh, buy around here and sellers. Uh, I think that this is expensive here and this is fair value right in between that but um but this is an auction and it's uh, auctioning fairly at the moment um so the the the, the dollar is valued between 99.44 and um uh, 97.71 so uh at the moment I think the dollar is is definitely still a buy especially when you have um 
you know, the, the Fed uh, keeping a weary eye on bond yield curves while signaling hikes are still on track, right? So um, if you don't know about bond yields, basically, uh, uh, just a, from a simple perspective, um, if the yield curve is, is rising, as in the two-year yield is lower than the 10-year yield, then um, that's a good sign for the, the economy. And if uh, you have an inverted yield curve, meaning that the uh, two-year short-term yields are uh, higher in percentage-wise than the 10-year um, uh, yield, then that's an inverted curve. And uh, at the moment, uh, it's funny because we were looking at this on Wednesday in our uh, group call, um, uh, bond yields, and we were saying that the bond yields had flattened. We'd noticed that it had flattened as well, uh, meaning that the two-year and the 10-year are pretty much you know, the same when it comes to uh, when it comes to the yield curve um, in in uh, or yield percentage, so uh, and again, so that's a potentially worrying uh, signal uh, for the economy as bond traders, um, you know, are not necessarily confident in the growth of uh, the economy um, in the in the long term anyway. So uh, it says an inversion of a key part of the yield curve has caught the attention of some of the Federal Reserve, but officials show no sign of ditching plans to keep raising rates, interest rates uh, to get inflation under control. Really, they can't. Um, so it says the two-year yield briefly exceeded the 10-year, right, as I was saying, on Tuesday for the first time since 2019 inverting yet another segment of the treasury curve and reinforcing the view that rate hikes may cause a recession um, and then the spread later went back to being slightly positive on the day uh, on Tuesday and remained so on Wednesday so um, just because there is an inverted yield curve doesn't mean that it you know uh, uh, you know the, the the economy will definitely go back into recession although it has been quite accurate and it doesn't even mean that it's going to go into it straight away right it means that there is a you know there is a signal there and uh, sometimes a yield curve can be inverted for a very long time i think the last time a yield curve the yield curve was inverted um uh, before a recession hit i think it must have been about a year and a half nearly two years or something like that so it doesn't mean that yeah because we're inverted all of a sudden we're going into a recession um not at all but also as well, oh, wrong one. Uh, I did have another story. Sorry, it was here. Um, the, uh, the video was that the Fed has has to accelerate tightening. And this is BlackRock's Rosenberg. You know, BlackRock are one of the, or if not the biggest um, hedge funds. Or uh, they have a lot of, uh, I think they have trillions under management. And uh, again, if these guys are coming out saying that the Federal Reserve have to um, tighten, meaning hike rates, then um, that generally is supportive for the dollar. Does that mean that, you know, it's going to be supportive for the dollar every single day or every single week? No of course not because you know the market is an auction so um you know traders have to buy and sell for cheap and that can take some time but in general you should see a higher um a higher dollar in the same way that you know for this week the dollar you know came down right doesn't mean that you know the dollar was weak does just means that the smart money who understand you know talk about you know you go on youtube and people talk about smart money concepts but don't actually understand or don't even mention fundamentals it's crazy um how can you be smart money you don't you know mention fundamental analysis but um you know smart money we're buying right this is cheap this is definitely cheap this was you know cheap and then prices eventually went higher in the weeks and months ahead. So if, um, you know, just because this week, you know, we're, I'm looking to buy the dollar doesn't mean that I'm saying that the dollar is going to go higher. You know, prices, you know, if, if, if the market wants to buy the dollar for a cheaper price, then that's what it's, that's exactly what it's going to do. Just because it pulls back from, you know, a week or two or even a month or so doesn't mean that the dollar, you know, is the fundamentals don't work. It just means that, you know, smart money are looking to buy as long as the fundamentals are still the same. Anyways, my bias again is to the upside. So um, looking at the dollar index, it's just looking at levels uh, for confluence, right? If price, do, the price does come down to the... Uh, um, the uh, 97 area, uh, then the dollar is definitely going to be a, a, a bargain down there. And I, I do want the dollar to come down. If, even if it goes higher, that's fine. Um, and then it pulls back and then allows me to get involved in, you know, any kind of dollar buying on any of the crosses. Then that's really my, um, my, my bias at the moment for dollar buyers. Um, now looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen again still really hasn't come down there was a higher high that prices made 
last week I think that was the Monday so uh, demand so we had yeah so we had uh, on the Monday prices you know shot up then we came back down into that higher high um, um, oh, sorry higher low area and then uh, demand uh, reacted there so then it's just a case of going down into a lower time frame whether you want to go down into the one hour or, or the two hour or the five hour or whatever it is that you want to trade and then look for potential buy trades me personally I wasn't I still think this is an expensive area I was saying to the guys in the group that I'm um, not keen necessarily on buying um, at the highs. Although, um, if you do, if you, if anyone did see a, an opportunity, as long as you've got enough upside potential, meaning that um, let's say you went down to the lower time frame and this was, you know, your entry was somewhere around, you know, here. As long as you've got enough upside potential before you get to the to the highs. <clears throat> That's a decent trade, right? If you, who knows where your, you know the um or your personal uh, entry would have been and where your stop loss is, but just wherever it is, just as long as you've got enough upside potential, um, <clears throat> that's the main thing. But personally, I want it. I do want it to come back down to um, a level um, uh, that is a bit cheaper. I feel more comfortable also as well. I do uh, look at. Uh, moving averages which are actually moving fair value and um, personally I try not to take any intra intraday trades uh, in demand zones unless we have um, price come down to at least a monthly fair value so uh, prices are still above that monthly fair value and any if, if price is above a moving fair value then um, in fact it is you know expensive right because if this is fair value anything above that is going to be expensive so um, that's just my opinion, of course. So I'm looking for if if prices can come down, it might not. But um, if it does, then I'll start to look for a buy trade. And again, with the yen, looking at the yen, um, uh, this was an interesting article. How Japan's yen lost its mojo as a safe haven. And one of the things with with fundamental analysis as well, right? And that, and that people really kind of struggle with is that you have correlations that can you know last historically, right? And um, there are there are periods where that can change every single risk event has to be evaluated differently and doesn't mean that it it has lost its mojo all you know um all together right because we can't think in terms of absolutes but <clears throat> what it does mean in that in this environment in this scenario with the ukraine and russia um it hasn't been acting like as a as a safe haven asset right and there are several reasons for that one being um fundamental analysis insofar as you know monetary policy right so um there was some interesting uh um, uh, uh, there's an interesting paragraph which kind of summarizes this um, it says this is it right so it says it says by contrast the Federal Reserve is preparing to boost its short-term policy rate right so interest rates as much as half a percentage point point in May and unveiled a runoff in its bond portfolio the divergent path right so divergence meaning you know one currency yeah, one central bank is looking to high rates and the other is not. Yeah, so um, if you understand that in a straight fight, the US dollar, sh you know, is doing what it can and the Federal Reserve is doing what it can to strengthen their currency, whereas the Japanese yen is not looking to do anything, right? Then the dollar should really be the one to buy, hence the reason why you have um trending markets for example right this is not some stupid elliott wave um you know prediction nonsense this is you know what the smart money are really looking at they're not looking at elliott waves they're looking at fundamental analysis um to to predict and uh, forecast where they think the value of the dollar yen is but also as well um so there's a divergence there right um and uh, it says it's down more than five percent since the start of 2022 compared with other currencies again comparison including the euro the yen hasn't fared quite so poorly even so the measuring when measuring it against the basket of units of trading partners it's fading a look and clearly be seen and there was something else that, that was in here that i thought was interesting um da -da 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 -da, it says the yen's failure 
to rise in a risk off environment indicates the increasing influence of commodity prices and ensuring terms of trade stock right says uh, Toru uh, Sasaki head of Japan market research at JP Morgan and Chase wrote in a recent note the vicious cycle between a deteriorating trade balance and falling yen may have started and also as well you have to realize that traders um, and investors want a return on assets right the the yen the yen is um, uh, is is in negative negative yields, right? I think it's minus zero point one, right? Negative interest rate percent, right? Whereas commodity currencies, which are commodities going higher in price, um, the likes of Canada, um, the uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar um, have all got positive um, uh, interest rates, right? So if you're going to put your money into somewhere, yes, safe haven wise, we know what typically happens, but with rising commodity prices um, and that affecting obviously um, uh, commodity currencies and, and their yield, um, that's also a factor as well, right? It's like why will why keep that you know your money in in a safe haven asset when typically there's an opportunity, or say typically, but there is an opportunity this time around in this risk off environment to actually make some money by just holding commodity currencies and commodities going higher, right? So, with all that being said. Um, Again, it doesn't mean that the, the yen is no longer a safe haven asset. But if you understand where money is going typically, then fine, brilliant. But every single risk off environment has to be evaluated differently, right? You can't just come out and say, well, the internet says this and the internet says that. It's that's not that's not how you know it works. It works maybe you know on the surface and to the layman, but you really have to understand advanced fundamental analysis, and that's what I'm here to do um, when it comes to uh, you know uh, trading, um, being a trading mentor, not just necessarily on on YouTube, but um, but with my uh, with my Discord group. And for those of you who do want and who are interested in uh, joining the group, um, literally, it's going to be. Uh, uh, enrollment closes today the 2nd of April I think around about 8 p.m. London time and if you do want to get involved in that then um, uh, in in, in uh, joining the group and being mentored by me and understand really advanced fundamental risk sentiment and supply and demand concepts because what I show on here for example is uh, quite quite uh, the, the, the basics of uh, supply and demand if you want to know really i take your take your trading to the next level then um uh you know basically you have until today so uh the dollar yen <clears throat> the dollar yen for me is a continued buy um also as well i think our uh, our our uh, um our spreadsheet as well which has uh, shows strength divergences and convergences the dollar yen is is again one of the top uh, currencies base and quote currency so you've got one, twos, and threes are typically the stronger currencies, and six, sevens, and eights are typically the weaker currencies. Now, also there's a caveat to that because you also have to understand the currency value cycle and uh, why a currency uh, that is ranked one, two, and three is likely to continue appreciating. Yeah, uh, or we have situations where a currency that is ranked one, two, and three does devalue, right? Because an expensive currency can actually hurt a, uh, an economy and um, currencies move in cycles, right? So nothing stays strong forever. In the same way that a, a currency that is you know, ranked six, seven, or eight, right? Which typically could be weak, doesn't always stay weak, right? Yes, we understand that it's ranked on the spreadsheet as six, seven, and eight, but we also have to do our due diligence and understand that you know six seven and eight can also mean a currency revaluation where things are changing in the economy and uh, in fact a six seven or eight ranked currency can actually be a great buying opportunity because this would be where um, a currency is undervalued so what we're looking at is really understanding divergences and uh, potentially convergence type trades so yes um, at the moment uh, on on from our fundamental analysis, uh, the, the dollar is going to continue to appreciate, whereas the currency, um, uh, the, the yen, is continuing to uh, devalue in comparison. So again, this is all the stuff that you would get and understand in real time uh, to make the best uh, currency trading decisions. If you join my mentoring um, group and um, Discord group, anyways, getting back to the charts. 
Uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss, and dollar Swiss has come down. It came down um, uh, earlier in the week. Uh, there was a nice buying opportunity there. I know some traders made some money last week. I think that was last week Friday, uh, going long there, took some profit, and then we had a bit of a pullback, right? A bit of a pullback. Now, from a uh, daily demand zone perspective I'm looking for prices really to come down to this area here I do like that as a as a buy trade um, again want to be a buyer of the, uh, the dollar and over the Swiss franc now again we are still in a risk off environment the yet uh, sorry the, um, the uh, Swiss franc actually is doing pretty it's doing okay I should say um, out of the uh, uh, two safe haven currencies um, the Swiss franc um, doing all right but they're not looking to high crates anytime soon so for me any pullbacks are buying opportunities but if you do want to get short on that um currency pair and maybe buy my uh, buy more into uh, a risk-off currency which uh, the swiss franc is acting as at the moment then uh, this supply zone the 93 round number is a decent area to look for um uh, sell trades um, on that currency pair, although I wouldn't recommend, and this isn't financial advice, but if I'm buying a Swiss franc, it's definitely not going to be against the, uh, the US dollar. Moving on to the uh, dollar CAD, um, and again, two currency pairs that are, you know, where the central banks are hiking rates. So for me, it's a more of a difficult trade. Um, the, the, the Canadian dollar has benefited uh, from rising commodity prices but for me I'm really not interested in this currency pair but there is a buying opportunity if you think that the US dollar is a buy um, and think you think that's going to be cheap for the US dollar if you think that the um, Canadian dollar is a, is a buy in fact there is a supply zone right on top of that demand zone right there and uh, there is a sell opportunity um, within that um, within that uh, supply zone I would you know break down that zone one of the ways to break down that zone is to use support and resistance again it's not necessarily one supply or demand or support and resistance we use all the tools uh, available for various reasons and uh, I think that uh, within that zone um, probably be the one two five six area uh, again you just zoom down into a lower time frame and see if that's uh, if that's a decent zone that you want to get involved in me personally i'm not looking at this currency pair it's not on my list uh new zealand dollar again similar to the uh the dollar cad where you have um uh, two uh strong currencies um i'm not looking to get involved although last week prices did come down into that zone and then bounced you know to the upside um, for me, again, it's just really uh, if you think that you know the, uh, <clears throat> the 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 US dollar is a buy, then you're looking at getting short within that supply zone. And if you think that the New Zealand dollar is a buy, then you're looking at getting you know long in that demand zone. But for me, again, fundamentally, not really interested in this currency pair at all. Uh, the pound dollar and the pound dollar. Again, I was saying a couple of weeks ago, I do think that the path of least resistance is still to the downside. <clears throat> hence why that demand zone from last week you know just didn't hold and i was also saying that i think prices will go into um a fair value auction between this high and this low so uh, that's what we're you know zooming in that's what pretty much we're seeing at the moment again two central banks looking to high rates although the pound i think is coming up to potentially being a sell um, um <clears throat> and this is really due to um, recent sharp price rises pushing millions in the UK towards over poverty overnight and in April chill has descended on Britain with warnings of ice snow and immediate spike in the cost of living the cost of living is is um, is a problem right because if uh, people generally are worried about the cost of living and uh, can't afford to go out and spend then that could and usually leads to um, <clears throat> problems in the economy right so what you're seeing is um, you know a central bank which is hiking rates but the economy may actually uh, suffer and looks to suffer if um, if uh, the the uh, um, the the, the um, uh, the cost of living it keeps going higher because of uh, energy prices so I think at the moment 
I was saying last week and in, in, in the previous weeks that I was um, very uh, cautious on buying the pound. I was still a buyer of the pound, but I said in, in, in the group that um, I wanted to just uh, uh, take a smaller position. In fact, let me see if I can find that uh, analysis. Right, so here was my uh, analysis, and this was on the 25th of uh, Friday, the 25th of March. And I said, hi, everyone. So here are my most uh, recent thoughts on the pound. Uh, in the short term, I think the pound is still a buy. Um, it, is it the best buy? I wouldn't put it ahead of the dollar, the New Zealand, uh, the CAD, or even Australia at the moment, Australian dollar. And uh, that's due to rising potential stagflation this year. Of course, stagflation could happen to most, if not all economies. But with the UK economy, I have been reading more articles recently that the economy could hit Hit, be hit sooner rather than later. Yes, the Bank of England is on the hiking cycle, which uh, should support, uh, should give support to the to the pound. But I keep I'm keeping a keen eye on continued rising inflation, uh, which can uh, have the effect of hurting the economy with stagflation. Right. So. Uh, if the rumour starts that indicates the UK is headed for stagflation, then my bias towards the pound will change. Currently, the pound Swiss has come down to an interesting level, uh, which now looks uh, like a stop hunt. Da, 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 da. And I was talking about the cost of living due to higher prices, right? So I was talking about cost of living, and then we get the cost of living. Um, article right which then brings the activation scenario more into focus uh, just to reiterate I still think the pound is a buy against the Swiss and the yen at the moment but my usual position size is going to be reduced on pound long trades until positive signs of UK economic growth emerge now again going back to um, you know the UK right and how much you know the uh, gas cost this for me isn't positive news so for me I think from now, I'm, I'm changing my bias on the pound. I don't know if I'm going to um, sell it at the moment, but I think uh, the pound potentially, um, you know, is not on my list of things to buy or sell. It might be a sell, probably, but I want to see the uh, the data and uh, um, and that. But I'm probably leaning towards now, you know, my bias being a sell trade. So, in fact, if that is the case, um, then really and truly, uh, then for me, it's going to be you know looking for pullbacks on that pound dollar and looking for either a sell trade there or a sell trade up into the uh and up into that supply zone um there around the one three threes one three three fifties um euro dollar right euro dollar and um this was has been a nice trade so far a lot of the guys got in short on a stop hunt around here and um yes prices broke through the uh, the supply zone but again um, our advanced strategies and understanding, you know, stop hunts. Um, uh, this was a stop hunt up here, and uh, prices actually uh, have um, made that a very profitable trade. You know, to the downside, a lot of traders got in around this area here, with 116. Well, I got in at 161, one, sorry, 1.1166 and uh, 1.117. On, on for some reason, on the um, on the Oanda broker. It doesn't look like it's actually in it's not in the um in a supply zone but if you go on to something like fxcm uh, in fact that is in fact there, there was a supply zone here uh, to get short and uh, other traders got involved in this um profitable trade so far and if you take into account pretty much what's happening with the dollar and the euro uh what should happen i'm not saying it's going to happen this week but uh you know we should see uh, a lower euro dollar right and uh what compounds that euro dollar sell is uh the fact that the euro inflation right tops estimates uh to hit new records um so uh that's what happened i think it was on was it what date was that maybe the friday yeah it was sorry the friday so april 1st uh, eurozone inflation accelerates to another all-time high as russia's invasion of ukraine uh roiled global supply chains and pro provided a fresh driver for already soaring energy costs and when you have high inflation but um, the eurozone will struggle to avoid a temporary drop in GDP growth. Uh, the eurozone is recovery is likely to come to a standstill on the back of the fallout uh, from the war in Ukraine. A multiple, a multitude of adverse shocks is set to push inflation to six percent in 2022. 
and for the time being the ECB will normalize itself will sorry will limit itself to normalizing its monetary policy stopping QE in the third quarter and uh, a first rate hike in the fourth now I don't know whether that is even possible now simply because um, and this was basically on the 31st of March the day before the inflation reading came out and uh, obviously um, now will the uh, will the central bank look to uh, high rates? Uh, I'm not so sure because again of this uh, stagflation potential, uh, the economy may not be able to support another uh, or a rate hike, right? So for me, a lot of uncertainty around the uh, the euro and more more certainty around the uh, the dollar, right? So for me, again, path of least resistance is generally to the downside. So with that being said. Um, We've got, uh, yeah, we've, that's really the, the you know where the bias is. If prices come up this week, um, then for me, I'm still looking for uh, for sells, right? Because this could just be literally a, another liquidity hunt um, uh, to the upside, and then just look from, looking for that downside potential. But if you do want to get long on the uh, the euro for whatever reason, then you also have a demand zone right there. All right, so that's going to be a decent demand zone for you to get involved in that 109 um, area or 110s, just above that 110s. Yeah, so uh, so there's that. Uh, you got the Australian dollar, US dollar. Uh, again, for me, uh, not necessarily the best trade to take. I'm not really interested in this pair, but technically, you've got a nice area to look for short trades if you haven't already, and then that would be a decent long trade if you're looking for to buy the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Commodity prices still going, you know, uh, I guess maybe stabilizing, going a bit higher. Um, you know, that's a decent buy trade, but again, I'm not buying the Australian dollar against the uh, the, the US dollar. Um, Aussie yen, this is something that I am looking to do, been looking to get involved in this trade for a while, but just uh, this is again at a very expensive area that has been a demand zone. Prices have kind of spiked through it, but held again. I don't think there's going to be a trade in this for me for a while. Again, going back to really some uh, moving fair value, we're way below that moving fair value. So let's see what happens. And for me, that's an expensive area, not looking to buy in expensive areas. Um, is there a chance to potentially go short? You can if you want to. There is a supply zone right on top of the uh, of that supply um, demand zone. In fact, I'm not going to really draw it on there. <clears throat> I'd rather wait for prices to continue falling and proving that 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 area is a stronger area of supply before you know looking for a pullback into that zone to get short. Um, and finally, gold. So gold. Um, again, uh, there are uh, several um, reasons to buy gold. Um, the the one um, thing against gold is that you know the dollar is looking to strengthen, and um, I think once the dollar stops strengthening, um, potentially because there is going to be a time um, where the dollar will generally start to pull back, or if there are you know general generally concerns um, around the 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 the. the um, U.S. economy, then I think the gold is definitely going to be a, a buy. I think it's a, still a buy now. To be fair, any pullbacks are buying opportunities. Um, I'd rather be a buyer of gold than sell than selling. There's, there's you know a lot more going for it uh, than um, they're not going for it, right? But uh, if you are looking to get short in that area, then there's supply. But for me. I think um, again, it's between really this 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 fair value auction between this uh, uh, one uh, 1966 at the moment and 1892. So <clears throat> gold being traded fairly between that uh, those two prices, and let's see what happens. Anything outside of that could be seen as a bargain or an expensive area. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. And again, just a quick reminder uh, that the um, Mentoring, uh, supply and demand, and fundamental analysis mentoring is coming to a close uh, today. So, I say today, depending on when you're watching it, 2nd of April. Um, and uh, this is going to be your last chance for a while. Again, I like to keep the group small. And again, a warm welcome to those of you who have uh, joined. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna try and get you to where you want to be with your trading. Um, it's gonna take hard work and dedication. Nothing is easy. Nothing is simple, especially you know trading. You're in one of the hardest environments, um, most difficult environments in the world to be successful at. And um, 
but uh, it does take dedication as, as all skills. Anyways, guys, take care, um, and I'll see you in the next video.